Hi, I'm Cameron. I'm an electrical engineer at MagnaWave. We often get the question, what is the difference between a spark chamber machine and a digital machine, and what kind of performance differences can you expect between each? So today I'm going to explain some of the basic operating principles and some of the differences between a spark chamber and digital PEMF machine. I'll start by explaining how a spark chamber machine works. It has four basic components in its operation, a power supply, a capacitor, a spark chamber with its electrodes inside, and a coil attachment. We begin with the power supply charging up the capacitor. A capacitor is an energy storage device that holds the energy from the power supply until it's ready to dump all of that out at once to the attachment. The charge level of the capacitor is determined by the distance between the electrodes. As you can imagine, a larger distance between electrodes requires a higher energy or higher voltage in the capacitor before it will arc over. So you set your distance uh, between the electrodes by setting the power level on your machine, at which point the capacitor will be charged up until it reaches the correct level, and all of that energy is dumped out through the spark chamber to the attachment coil. The capacitor is now emptied, and the process starts over again. As you can imagine, a farther distance between the electrodes is a higher energy pulse, but it also takes longer for the capacitor to, capacitor to be charged up for each pulse. This means the pulses are less frequent and more powerful. If you set your machine to a lower power, led power setting, um, the capacitor doesn't take as long to charge up, and you have smaller pulses happening more frequently. Digital machines do not use spark chambers to control their pulsing. Instead, they use an electronic switch and a controller to actuate each pulse. But all of the rest of the basic components are the same. First, we have a power supply charging up a capacitor. In this example, the machine has three power settings, and it is set on power level two. When the capacitor reaches the correct threshold for the set power level, it closes an electronic switch, and all of the capacitor's energy is transferred to the attachment coil. At this point, the capacitor is emptied, and the process starts over again. As you can see, for a higher power setting, the capacitor will take longer to charge up, and there will be more time in between each pulse. A lower setting would pulse more frequently and take less time to charge the capacitor.